On this episode of Bum With The Wrench, we're gonna jump right into the work. That last episode was a lot of me talking, so I'm gonna try and do as little talking as possible in this episode, and more work. <clears throat> Today is Sunday. You'll notice I'm in my uh, Sunday dress jeans and my, uh, you know, Bass Pro Shop sh uh, shirt, so. It's not my normal attire. Um, I only got a couple hours today while the uh, family's taking naps uh, to run up here to the shop and get a little bit of work done here on the car. My goal today is to get the lower radiator hose um, fitted. So I already fitted the upper radiator hose yesterday. Um, that's here. Um, so this hose here, I went ahead and um, shortened it. Shortened it about a little bit too much actually, but that's okay. When making these hoses, I had to take them apart, put them back together so many times that um, I actually kind of scratched the fittings and stuff. Uh, they're fine, they'll perform fine and everything else. Um, but obviously this is a very high-end car, so it won't fit the build. So I'm gonna use these from here on out as uh, fitting fittings, uh, mock-up fittings. No big deal, I've got some other fittings over there I'll replace it with. So my, but again, my goal today is to shorten this lower radiator hose. Um, I need to take this one down about a quarter of an inch and then retest it, retest fit it. And then Monday, when I come in, um, I'm gonna make two brand new hoses. Um, as you can see here, this one's actually not too bad. It's just got a couple little gouges and scratches and stuff from uh, disassembly and reassembly. Um, you know, on the lower one, this is actually, this is acceptable. Um, however, I do need to shorten this to make sure this is gonna fit. Um, I'm very sure when I shorten it, this is gonna get damaged. So, if it does, no big deal. I've got other fittings. Again, I'll just use these for, um, you know, mock-up fittings uh, for the next car. So, these are just fine. Um, so let's jump right into that. I'm gonna take this apart, shorten this down, fit it into the car. I do have the gasket for the thermostat. I have the thermostat. I have all the bolts, all the stuff for that. Um, so I'm gonna try and get that fitted today. Now I'm pretty sure when I fit that, I'm gonna have to um, actually put the thermostat housing on this hose. That's why I was finding, I was how, but the only way I was able to actually get this hose on the car was to put the one side completely on the radiator, put the thermostat fitting on this side and then rock it into place and then put the bolts for the thermostat. Because the amount of space that this takes to actually thread onto the fitting, it was too long and this hose really doesn't have any flex to it. So um, I know that's a little concerning. However, uh, the motor is, I mean, almost, almost hard mounted to that frame. It's got some very small uh, polyurethane bushings. This motor's really not gonna move. So not too concerned with it. Um, so let's jump right into this. Let's get that going and we'll get this cut.
There we go, that feels pretty good. So, it's a little more than I'd like sticking, sticking out, but it'll do. See how much that chews these fittings up? Happening to put that much tension on them. Even with these soft jaws, that now fell. They just get chewed up. Yeah, I need to clean this one. Got some good gouges in it now. Yeah, they really get chewed up pretty good. But uh, let's see how this fits on the car. All right, so we got the fitting made. Um, you know, it really kind of chews it up. You see how much it really just chews the fitting up. They're so hard, they take so much pressure. Um, no big deal. You can kind of see the, the hose too, what it does to the hose. Like they really don't like coming apart and going back together and you're not supposed to do that. No big deal, I have more hose over there. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna make all brand new fittings. Um, but for now, let's get this, uh, the car in the air. We'll do the work from underneath. Um, so give me a minute, let me get it lifted up and we'll uh, see if this fits now. Okay, so got the hose. Uh, now we just need to put it up here in the car. So this is the Earl's fitting um, because it updates it to the um, older model um, thermostat. There's a little spacer that has to go in there as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this on for right now, although I feel like I'm probably gonna have to take it off. I'm just gonna put one screw in it just to kind of hold it up on the engine. Um, but so far my experience with this has been <clears throat> that I actually have to put the hose on that fitting first and then put that fitting on the engine in order to actually get it to fit. But I'm hoping with the shorter, this will actually work. I don't know. I'm gonna try this way first because, you know, of course this is the preferred way to try and get this hose on the car, on and off the car. Okay, let's see here. I think what I wanted was... Uh, this hose kind of has a natural kink to it. So I want to make sure I utilize that as much as possible. So that looks like that would fit. Let me try and go on the radiator first. And as far as this fitting goes, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to get yeah, there's no way to get it on that like that. It's too it might be too long still. Let's see. So it's a lot of work <clears throat> to uh, have a and radiator hoses. But as a good friend of mine always says. You gotta want it. I think that will actually work. Let's see if I can slip this fitting in there. And that'll come down. Just like that. And then I should be able to fold these in. Now, the hard part about this is actually going to be able, being able to get the thermostat in there with all of this. You know? I mean, there is that side of it too. But I'm not even going to attempt that until I'm ready to have it done. That's it. Yep, that's it. That's going in. 
Okay. <clears throat> now you'll notice, especially, I don't know from, if you can see it from your angle, probably not because that, this crank pulley is in the way, but there's a little gap on this backside. So as I tighten up that, it's gonna kind of move this fitting around. Let me get out my wrench and see if I can manipulate that to remove that from the equation. There we go. Like I was saying, this hose kind of has a natural um, bend in it. And because I'm using swivel fittings, I can kind of swivel this, this hose around to give me to utilize that kind of natural bend whooping the hose because those fittings aren't quite totally perfect lined up with each other. They're close, but I think that'll do it. That is the upper and the lower radiator hose on the car. Let me, uh, let me get you guys over so you can look at this. So yeah, you can see that fitting. I don't know if you can quite see up the side of it. There's a little gap right back here. It's the block. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Let's the camera go up, there we go. I don't know if that's focusing. But right back here, there's a little gap. So yeah, that's, this is, this is about, I mean, you know, other than actually just putting rubber hoses on it, you know, which honestly <laughs> I should just do, but I like making life hard on myself. You know, so I mean, you could see how close <clears throat> that actually is. It works. It works. Um, you know, like my buddy says, you got to want it. And this is definitely one of those. If you're going to do it, you got to want it because I loosen this up. Can I take some pressure off that? No, not really. I mean, the other thing is if I could tilt, tilt the radiator just a tad, it would help with that too. Those fittings being so short so close together um, and, there, and such a little hose in there makes for no no bending so it's good enough though it'll work it will work that is short though man is that short so that's it radiator hoses are done the reason I wanted to get the radiator hoses done today is one so um, tomorrow I can come in and actually um, make the final fitted ones that are going to go on the car. Um, the good part about this is, is if I do need to make any slight adjustments to it, lo longer, shorter, anything like that, I can do it because I'm going to make a whole nother set tomorrow morning. But I need to get this done. I need to get this finished. I need to make sure that's what I'm going to go with. Everything is fine because tomorrow when I come in, um, I'm actually going to um, put a little blue Loctite on the motor mount bolts. And the reason why I'm using a little blue Loctite is because uh, the motor mount can slide uh, back and forth. And so I'm gonna put a little blue Loctite on the motor mounts uh, bolts and then tighten those down 
uh, torque those in place and that's it. Motor will not move now. Uh, I needed to finish this to get that next step done. Tomorrow, um, it's time to get into that, cutting the bell housing, cut the shifter hole, install the throw out bearing, shim the starter, and get all of that stuff done. Once that transmission's locked in place, a huge step forward. Um, from there, it's, it, you know, it's back to power steering and, 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 and uh, the steering shaft and the power steering hoses. Um, but I need to get this motor locked into place. I need to know that it's not gonna move anymore so I can get to cutting that steering shaft. I can get to um, doing all the rest of this stuff. That way I know how much room I actually have to work with. So that's good, this is done. Um, tomorrow when we come in, make those hoses real quick, jump on this transmission, get this cut, get the floor cut, and um, lock that thing down in place. All right guys, I'll see you in the morning. All right, good morning. It's Monday morning here, uh, kind of late in the morning. Um, yeah, actually almost lunchtime. Uh, you know, got stuff I gotta do in the morning um, for the business, but now I can uh, work on the car for the rest of the day. So we're gonna jump right into it today. Um, I know I said I was gonna make those hoses first thing in the morning. I'm gonna put those on hold. Uh, don't need those right now. Plus I need them off the engine because um, I'm gonna take that transmission out which is gonna cause the engine to uh, tilt. So those can't be on the engine right now. So uh, I'm gonna quick take those off and then uh, raise the car up and start pulling the uh, transmission off the back of this thing. But before I do that, um, I need this part. So I need this to uh, tell me where to put that hole in the floor. Yeah, it's barely off. It's like, you know, about an inch or so off of where it was. And so to do that, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the actual uh, shifter part. I just need the round part. Um, I'm gonna set that up on the transmission, mark the hole where I gotta cut it. And then uh, after that, then I'll pull the transmission, cut that hole out, um, and then move forward with uh, removing the uh, scatter shield, the clutch flywheel, um, and then the, uh, that spacer plate, whatever that stupid thing is called. Um, it goes between the uh, transmission and the engine. Um, trim both those pieces, make them look real nice, pop them back up there, torque the clutch down, um, and then at that point, I can stab the transmission back on it with this on, because at that point it should be able to, um, you know, pop up right through the hole where it's gotta be. Uh, the owner of this car, um, which is the owner of this building and this business. He's a, a taller feller. So this thing, you can put it forward or backwards, being that he's a uh, taller person. I'm gonna put it backwards, which will make it, you know, not much, uh, but it's a little bit um, back toward, toward him. So I figured that'd be the better place. Um, honestly, you, you wouldn't really feel much difference with it either way. Um, and it's got the little Hurst, you know, shifter that's bent back and everything on it. But anyways, so let's jump into that, get that going and see if we can get this button, this transmission buttoned up today. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get it back in, but hopefully we can get a majority of it done. Um, that way that is done. I can check that off the list and move on to the next thing. All right, guys, give me a minute. Let me get set up. Um, all right, guys, it's a little late in the afternoon now. I'm looking at my arm like I gotta watch. Um, but I got everything all set up. So I uh, got the screw jack up here for when I take the uh, transmission out, I can hold the engine up. I do have some cardboard back there behind the cylinder head um, so that it does, when the motor does lean back and touch the firewall, it's not gonna gouge anything. Um, and then after I take the transmission out, I'll go ahead and put the, uh, the screw jack right under the oil pan here and just kind of lift it up so it doesn't sit on there. I have taken all of the fuel lines and stuff off the back. I've taken the, um, uh, the intake manifold off the lower portion. Just kind of stripped down as much as I can that I, uh, that I feel like it maybe get pinched or damaged uh, when that motor tilts back. Of course, all the cooling lines are off. Uh, the AC lines and heater lines, that kind of stuff really doesn't matter. You're, you're, it's, it's just gonna flex with the motor flexing. 
everything else is pretty clear and okay. So um, I'm gonna get started pulling this uh, transmission out. So let's get started. All right, guys, it's uh, next day here. Um, started cutting the hole in the in the floor here for the uh, the, the shifter to go through. Um, I started out with a nibbler, uh, which was doing a really good job. You can see over here, but then uh, there's mastic up here on the floor, sound deadening material. Um, and so it really kind of just, you know, like a shark bite on this side because it was just getting hung up. Uh, so then I switched over to uh, just a small uh, angle head die grinder with a uh, cutoff wheel on it. You know, just gingerly just going through and, and uh, cleaning that up. So my plan today is to uh, go ahead and clean up that, that little bit of a, a mess right there. Let me get you pointed right here. There we go. And then... Um, what I want to do is take that piece that I cut out and then I'm going to stick that up here on that side where it was and go ahead and tack that back in. Um, it's not a perfect hole, but it's going to clear up this side here. Um, there's honestly, there's no real problem with this part of the hole being open. Um, honestly, it should be fine. However, you know, this is a nice car. Um, want to take the time and just you know continue to, to keep it nice so um, I'll tack this in there it's like I said not a perfectly round hole but um, you know it'll uh, it'll fill that gap so I'm gonna work on that today I had to media blast it because uh, all the mastic and stuff that was on it um, no big deal there it cleaned up pretty easily um, so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start by um, cleaning this edge up here, get all that nice and smooth. I don't want to take too much material away. And then the plan is to basically take, um, I'm going to take some um, vacuum tube and then just edge it with vacuum tube after it's nice and clean and, and this, this little piece is welded back up there. Um, I'll edge it with some vacuum tube, um, just use a little bit of uh, crazy glue and glue that on so it's got a nice little... Uh, seal right there the more you can keep the hot air and water and that kind of stuff out of it um, on this side of the floor i'll go ahead and grind it the weld uh, nice and smooth and uh, put some paint over top of it you shouldn't really notice that it's there after i'm done um, as far as the other side goes i'm just going to put some um, seam sealer on that side it's underneath the uh, the center console you'll never see it uh, no big deal there. So um, let me get working on that. Um, and then when I uh, when I go to clean this or finish this up and put that edging on there, I'll bring you guys back in, show you what I did. Uh, so basically my plan is to use a small um, cooking pot and then just stick that over on top inside the car on top of the trans tunnel. Um, that's going to keep the welding splatter from going anywhere. Um, and then what I'll also do is I'll take some welding blanket and um, kind of wrap it around that cooking pot so if anything falls out uh, all the carpets missing in the in the forward half right here it's uh it's but the mastic is still there you know just don't want to get anything hurt so 
I'll put that cooking pot that'll keep it from splashing up on the dashboard and then um, the 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 welding blanket will keep that mastic um, from just you know getting hot holes in it and that kind of stuff so um, give me a minute let me get set up and then uh, I'll bring you guys back in and show you how it looks all right be right back with you all right guys um, I've got the transmission hole prepped and ready to weld um, I've got the little piece prepped and ready to weld uh, but before I jumped into that, I wanted to go ahead and just kind of bang out this part right here. Um, reason being is I wanted to, to cut this uh, spacer here and also cut the, uh, <clears throat> the scatter shield so that it doesn't hang down lower. As you can see, well, I'm not sure from your perspective, but um, the cross members here, the, the oil pan just barely tapers. I think when the motor is actually tipped up, it's just kind of right above the cross member, um, if I remember correctly. So uh, for this, uh, I really needed to trim that off right there. Um, that was a big uh, wind catch, uh, rain, water, debris, um, trash. You know, if you ran over anything on the highway by accident, it would definitely come and hit that. So I wanted to make sure I got that trimmed and also get that scatter shield trimmed because I mean, if you hit something big enough, it would bang, rip the motor right out of this car. It was a big lip that, hang, that hung down. So I wanted to smooth that out. There's no problem with cutting it uh, because there's really nothing in here. Um, there is a bolt hole here, right here, but there's no, um, there was no hole there for it. There are two here that are still being utilized that are going to the oil pan. Um, so all of those will still be utilized. I just took the flywheel off, cut this, um, put the flywheel back on, put a little silicone on the, uh, on the bolts and torque them to spec. So now all I need to do is wipe that silicone off, the little extra that's hanging out. I got a decently dirty, clean-ish rag here. So I'll just kind of wipe around kind of get the, uh, the silicone off of the bolts. Now on these, you want to uh, put a little silicone on the bolt because the bolt goes into the uh, crankcase. It's open to the crankcase. So if you don't put a little silicone there, um, they will leak. And then of course you get oil all over your clutch and then you're pulling all this back apart, changing the clutch pressure plate, you know, cleaning up all the oil and uh, putting some silicone on there and putting it back in. Now when I pulled it out, it didn't look like it actually had silicone on it. Uh, it had some type of sealer on it. I don't know what it was. Um, it, to me, it looked like a Loctite kind of, but, uh, and maybe it was, I don't know. But, and maybe that's good enough to seal it. I'm not sure. At the time that the motor got put in this car, um, I had a mechanic working for me and, uh, and another guy. I was out sick, um, I think with COVID, when uh, they put the motor in this car. So I don't know if they put the clutch on or if it was a, well, I know they put the clutch on, but I don't know if they put the, the flywheel on or if that was Texas Speed that put it on, I don't know. So I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, I took it off and cleaned everything real, real well. Cleaned the bolt holes, cleaned the bolts, cleaned the flywheel, cleaned the mating surface. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all good. Let me back you guys up a little bit because I'm about ready to spray this with uh, brake clean and I really don't want to get brake clean on my brand new camera. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get a Nice clean rag. Let me throw that one away. I really need to start buying brake clean by the jug, you know, and then putting them in those uh, reusable, you know, little spray bottles. Used to have those at the transmission shop I worked at a long time ago. Um, they were really good. So I'm just using microfiber, nice clean microfiber. Sure, I'm gonna ruin it, but. You want to make sure you get everything off the flywheel before you put the clutch on. Make sure 
All the bolt holes are clean. Kind of went around and cleaned up, you know, a lot of the bolt holes and stuff. Make sure all that's nice and clean. Don't want to wipe off any of the lubricant on the throw out bearing. Just kind of want to get everything clean. All right, that's pretty, pretty clean there. Looks like there's a little staining up around where the, right around here where the clutch mounts. No big deal. You can see another clutch foot here. <clears throat> it's to be expected, really. Okay. So let me think here. Um, I need to get the alignment tool. Let me run and grab that real quick. I'll be right back with you guys. Found it. Yep, make sure it fits. And it does. All right. I always just kind of test that to make sure it's not going to fall out when I walk away. Seems good. If anything. It'll fall in the trash can. Because if it falls, that's where it's gonna go anyway. All right. All right, put the clutch back in it. Let's see here. Got a locating dowel and a locating dowel. Okay. And then what I usually do is just kind of, you know, if you wiggle your clutch alignment tool, you'll notice that it kind of has a little bit of a circle to it. Um, dang it. So what I'll do is just kind of wiggle it, find that circle, and then just put everything in the center of the circle. Reach over top of you here and grab a bolt. Slam that in there real quick. I'm just gonna put a couple in here just to hold it. And then I'm gonna go through and use a little Loctite and Loctite it in. Come on. Okay, you're good. Reach over top of you again here. Let me just make sure my clutch didn't move. I'll get this one started a little bit. And of course, I don't know where the socket went that I used on this. Was I using the, what was I using? Uh, Let's see here. Was I use I wasn't using that, was I? These aren't tin, are they? No. No, those are the bell housing bolts. What was I using on this? See, that's the problem when you got just too much stuff around. Can't figure out what I was using. Let's try that. Let's see if this works. And it does. See? Alright, let me check. Alright. Okay, that feels good. Feels good. Alright. So that'll pretty much do it. Um, Hmm. 
cheap. Uh, huh. Interesting. Uh, kind of like a ball end on it. Weird. Anyways, um, yeah. So that'll that'll do nicely. Let me get these uh, torqued down and Loctite it up, and um, yeah, we can get that bell housing back on and. Get, hopefully get this welded up, get the trans back in today. That'd be nice. All right, guys, give me a minute. All right, got the uh, clutch back in the car, I'm ready to do the uh, scatter shield. But before I do that, I want to um, shim the starter because I can see everything with the starter right now. Now's the perfect time to go ahead and set the, the shim on that starter. So I'm just gonna grab that out of the box real quick. So, starter's already got the bolts hanging out of it, which is nice. On sitting on top, in this, there's two shims in there or one shim. Um, so we might have already shimmed this before, but now is the best time to go ahead and and uh, double check that. So, to start, I'm just going to put the starter in. Uh, the way that it is, so I can see. Oops, dang it! How it's gonna look? Got a washer on it, but I don't see any reason to have a washer. It's strange. Okay, Let's get this in there. doing that upside down or something no seems right I think doing that right Can you put that on backwards no See the hole? Oh, there it goes. Okay, let me grab a wrench real quick for this. All right. Um, okay. Longest ratchet I could find. There it goes. Oh, there it not goes. What's the deal with this thing? Let me run this one up a little bit. I don't like the way this is fitting. It doesn't really seem right. Okay, that one's snug. Kind of seems like it's bound on the oil pan. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, the oil pan is actually forcing it forward. Huh. 
Okay. All right, well, give me a minute. Let me see if I can uh, figure out what's going on here. Um, before I let you go, I'll show you the problem that I see. Here, let me get you off the stand. So, bear with me here a second. So basically right here, where you can see the, 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 fly, the uh, oil pan is shimmed or cut away, machined back. And this, of course, is where the starter bolt goes. And this, this trimmed out piece is not enough. So it's pushing the starter that way, pushing it that way. And so the bolt is offset like that. So this one won't go in. So give me a second, let me figure that out. It seems like this is upside down, but I know it's not. All right, give me a second. And then, uh, yeah, I'll uh, be right back with you guys. Okay. All right, guys, well, starter was the wrong starter. Um, apparently that was a four, three, five, eight, uh, six o. Oh, uh, I can't remember what it says. It said uh, uh, GMC LS truck 4.8, 5.3, 6.0, 168 tooth flywheel um, for a variety of different LS motors. Um, not the LS3 though. So um, doesn't fit this car. And then I spent all afternoon running around to all the local auto parts stores thinking that, you know, hey, it's a starter, you know, 2014 Chevy Camaro SS, you know, that's a modern car. Somebody's going to have a starter. Nope. Nobody's got a starter. The, the, the cheapest one I could find was $256, $258, something like that. I ended up getting the whole thing for like 200 bucks overnighted, um, which the, it's the end of the day today. So overnight means basically two days. Won't see it tomorrow. I'll see it the next day from Summit. So, um, you yeah. That's life. Uh, Got to wait a little bit on the starter. Uh, I really just want to put the put the uh, the scatter shield on this thing and just be done with it. Um, obviously, you know I, I need to wait. Uh, there's no sense in hurrying on the car. Just going to cause more problems. Um, I did take the last couple seconds there and and fit the uh, the oil pressure. Um, so I mean. Guess I got something done today. So tomorrow, I think the plan is going to be to uh, do, like I said this morning, and weld up this hole um, in the floor. The only reason I was kind of waiting on that is because I didn't want I didn't want to lower it with the screw jack underneath the engine right here. Um, but in order to kind of take this off, I needed to remove that anyways, um, and then discovered that the motor hangs they're just fine doesn't hit the firewall so i'm good to go ahead and lower the car down uh, but since i'd already started that process i just went ahead and finished it up figured i would get the bell housing on on the motor uh, get the starter set and uh, plug the transmission back into the back of it um, as a final fitment and torque everything down for you know that last time but you know uh, as any project car nothing really seems to go smoothly so even with a modern engine um so yeah i'm gonna wait on that uh tomorrow like i said we'll come in we'll weld on this thing get that thing looking nice and pretty throw some paint on the bottom of it on the top part i'm just gonna throw some seam sealer on it um it's underneath the um the uh center console anyways you're not gonna see it plus i'm gonna put uh the rubber boot um, that goes up here on the shifter part. Um, I'm going to put that on it. Um, so it's actually going to have two rubber boots is what I'm thinking. So initially it, it just had a, a rubber boot with a plate uh, bolted to the floor. Um, and now it's going to have the center console. So I figured what I'll do is I'll just take that rubber boot, bolt it to the floor, push the boot all the way down tight, and then put the center console in and then do the shifter boot on that. So, um, 
it'll be double booted, but you won't get that air coming through, you know, like as most old cars, um, you get that uh, hot or cold or, you know, whatever coming through the, the center console right there, you won't get that with this car. And it'll keep it quieter and it'll be nicer. Um, so that's the plan, I'll work on that tomorrow. That'll probably take uh, most of the day, you know, not in a hurry because waiting for this. So, um, you know, that's it, such is life. It's uh, six o'clock, I'm gonna shut off the lights, go home, um, get some supper, get some sleep, play with my kid, and then uh, try it again tomorrow. Anyways, all right guys, see you in the morning. All right guys, uh, it's the next morning here, or actually next afternoon. Again, <laughs> this is uh, only, this is my this is my job, I'm the only person that works here, so it's hard to jump in things first thing in the morning. Um, that's kind of why, uh, another reason why this car is a little bit slow going, um, it's an extremely hard build because everything's got to be so precise and perfect and nice and beautiful and high end and all of that. But then also uh, I have a whole business that I have to run as well. So um, today we're going to weld up the, um, the shifter tunnel, the transmission tunnel. I'm just going to take that piece that I cut out and roll that to the front half to make a somewhat nice round circle. I am, after I weld it in, I'm gonna grind it all nice and flush on the bottom, uh, paint it. Um, I've got some nice epoxy paint. Um, I'll paint it up. It should look pretty, pretty good. Uh, obviously, if you cut something, you weld something in, you're gonna see a little bit right there. You know, it's underneath the car in a very hard to see spot. You're never really gonna see it, but still my main purpose in wanting to do that is I wanna keep the inside of this car um, as nice as it was when we first bought it, when we first bought it and drove it. I'm telling you, this car handled so nice, rode so nice, and the interior was nice and quiet. As you can see, it's got all the sound deadening in there. So this car was really nice. I, I swear it was like driving a brand new Camaro, but a 1968. Um, so I'm gonna, what I did was I just dropped a cooking pot over top of the, uh, the transmission tunnel there. It's exactly what you think. I mean, I could show you, but it's, it's exactly what you think. It just, just find a pot that fits over the hole. And that's basically just to keep any of the sparks and anything that from welding, from going up, hitting the dashboard or catching anything on fire. Um, it is nonstick in case you were wondering. <laughs> um, although it's probably a Walmart nonstick, so it's not gonna last, but hey, it's, it's a shop. It's the, everything in here is shop tools, and including butter knives and pots. So um, I'm gonna get this thing lifted up. I'm gonna weld that in real quick. Um, hopefully not catch this car on fire. And um, then we'll get that cleaned up. I am still waiting for the starter. When I ordered that starter over two years ago now, it feels like, um, well, maybe not two years. Anyways, um, I ended up ordering it for, like I was telling you before, the 4.8, 5.3, 6.0 LS, which is a different motor than the 6.2. Um, I ran around to all the local stores trying to find a starter for a 6.2 so I can get, the, get that transmission buttoned up, could not find one. Ended up overnighting one from Summit so I can get this thing finished up. Uh, it should be here tomorrow. Um, pr procrastination sometimes works out in your, in your best favor. You know, um, you know, I was wanting to weld that shifter hole up and make that look all beautiful and everything else. If I would have taken the time to do that over the last couple days and instead of jump into the clutch like I did, um, I would be now sitting idle. I mean, there are other things I guess I could do, like the fuel lines that I've been totally procrastinating on. <laughs> but um, you know, it kind of worked out. So now I can get that, I can get that welded up, get that cleaned up, get that all done today, and get it ready for that transmission to go back in there tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, the starter shows up. I pop that in the car, make sure everything fits well. I can check the mesh on the uh, on the gear to the ring gear, make sure that comes out fine and everything else. Um, I'm just going to use a melt a crayon on the gear, and then uh, as it comes out, it'll you know it'll uh, it'll show you where it meshed up uh, just by rubbing that crayon piece off. That's my plan with that. Um, hopefully that checks out okay. Again, um, just shim up the starter if it needs it. I don't. 
know if these new starter starters need to be shimmed um, being that it's a chevy and every other chevy starter i've bought including the one for this car had shims i'm sure it has to be shimmed um, and the last thing you want to do is be out at a show or something and hit that starter and have it make that rah, 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 that horrible starter noise don't want that i uh, want it to sound real nice i wasn't able to get a uh the smaller high torque starter um i'm sure they do make one um but the only one that i could get in time was the stock gm starter which in my mind is totally fine i'm not a big fan of the high torque sound um the only thing that i'm worried about is this is a car that has headers on it now last time i when i had the headers up in there i remember there being a significant amount of room over there but i still need to check that so that's another thing we're going to check in the morning put that starter in put that header up there make sure everything clears and everything's nice and there's no problems anywhere and then go ahead and start buttoning up that transmission but you know with my luck lately <laughs> it seems like i'm going to put that starter in try and put that header on it it's not going to fit um but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it tomorrow. For now, let me get this thing lifted up and see if we can get that, uh, that transmission tunnel nice and welded up and spray painted and looking great. So uh, give me a couple minutes. Let me get this thing lifted up, get set up, and then I'll get you guys underneath there, um, you know, I guess to watch me weld. All right. Be right back with you. All right, guys. I'm all set up. I got you guys way there in the back, you know, because I'm not going to ruin it brand new camera but I got you zoomed in you can see the the hole right about here yep that's what we'll be welding on um, got the piece here that I'm gonna be welding in got my helmet got my Googles all right so um, got my welder set up you know this I, I love Miller welders this welder is really nice because it's got an auto setting for dummies. I love that. I'm just going to put a couple tacks here real quick just to kind of hold it in. That way I can kind of get my shape and make sure it fits right. Now it's not going to make a perfect circle going, you know, closing that new circle in perfectly but it's going to get close. So there's a little bit of filler that I got to do too, but that's okay. So <clears throat> now I kind of see where I'm going to put it. Let's, uh, let's make some lava. Got no gloves on right now because you know, that's smart. Um, helmet adjusted here there we go all right because I need to be able to feel the place that I'm holding it ah, dang it. that's the bad part about welding with no gloves <laughs> you're gonna shock yourself and that feels so awesome yes all right, let's do that again, because that's fun. Yes, I love that. I love that. No gloves again, you know? <sighs> you know, there's a lot of, they say blood, sweat, and tears. You know, I'm going to go as far as to say burn marks, too. Ah, dang it. There we go. Okay. Now that that's set in place, let me go throw some DMSO on that burn so that I don't feel it. And uh, I'll be back with you guys. Yes. All right, guys. Just went to my office, grabbed some... Uh, DMSO, DMSO. Um, I got it in this little roll-on. 
you know, thing. I always keep it here in the in the shop in my office. Because uh, if you ever burn yourself, throw some of that on there, and it's basically, you're not going to feel it. Um, you're not going to have that burning, hard, ah, bubbly, no. No, that's going to happen. I don't know what's in it. It's kind of like Marvel Mystery Oil. Well, no, it's not, because people know what's in it. Um, but to me, it's like Marvel Mystery Oil. I don't know what's in it. But I know one thing, it works good. So if you've never used it, and uh, you ever do dumb stuff like me and weld without gloves on, because you need to be able to feel the piece you're welding on, get you some DMSO. You can thank me later in the comments. All right, this thing's not held on. Oh, on that side, it's not held on at all. That's, that's nice. That's okay though. Just stick it right there. I can do this with gloves on now. After I get this kind of set, I'll bring you in and kind of show you what I was doing and why I was insistent upon burning myself. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I cut, the, I cut that puck out of this side. So I just flipped it over and now I'm welding on this side. But I wanted to put two spot welds on either side so that I could kind of shape it because, you know, it came from a different piece. Um, what I need to do now is just continue to make sure that these all these little edges are flat. I can tell this side, this is down a little bit. So I'll need to shape that as I go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and all the edges that are pretty flat, I'm going to start putting weld on those. And then as I get to the spots where it's hanging down, like you can see a ripple right here, I'll tack it over here and then bend this up and then continue to tack, bend, tack, bend, tack, bend. That way when you go around, it's all nice and flush to the floor. Um, and then I'll come back in um, and uh, grind all the weld off, put a little paint on it, and uh, it'll look good to go. As you can see, it's not a perfect circle um, because that puck, you know, going in on the one side is, uh, you know, didn't perfectly make the, uh, the circle there, but it's okay. All right, well, it looks like a boogery mess, exactly what you would think that looks like, but, um, you know, small patch panel. And uh, it's filled in, so no smoke coming out of the car. You'll kind of know if the car's on fire, you can hear it. <laughs> See what I did in my finger? Yeah. There's that little spot right there. So 
Oh, it's not bubbled up though. All it did was just kind of change colors. Doesn't hurt. A um, couple days that'll just flake off and go away. Um, let me get this uh, cleaned up. I'll do it lower down, do a quick fire check. And then uh, I'm gonna grind it flush. I'll bring you guys in so you can take a look at it. Um, right now it looks exactly like you think it'd look. Boogery mess. So let me get it cleaned up and bring you guys back. All right, give me a second. All right guys, got the floor all cleaned up. It's not perfect. Um, it's the underside of the car way up in the transmission tunnel. And you could take the time if you wanted to, to sand, you know, put a little filler in there, um, sand it all nice and smooth, block it out, make it look like no one was ever there. Is the car worth it? Yeah, the car's worth that kind of attention. However, you gotta remember, this is not a SEMA car. This is a, uh, this is a really nice driver. Doesn't mean that you, you know, should take that kind of, um, you know, that, that, that kind of shortcut with this. But honestly, what's, what's the purpose, you know, in going that far with it? Um, it's not a SEMA car. It, sure, it's beautiful underneath. And, and here, let me show you. It doesn't look bad. Hang on, let me get you, let me get you off the stand here and get you uh, pointed at, at the repair. So, you know, there it is. That's the, uh, that's the repair. Is it perfect? No. Uh, let me zoom in here so you can see it. There you go. There. Just looks a lot better. It's cleaner. You know, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But it's nice, you know? It looks good. Yeah, it's got some, some waviness to it when you get up there. You can see where I ground and, you know, got a couple of pinholes, but I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna patch those pinholes with the, um, with the uh, uh, seam sealer from the inside is, what, is my plan on that. So yeah, not bad. So look, this car's just about ready to have the transmission go back in it, you know? All right. So look, the transmission tunnel looks pretty good. As you guys saw, it's not bad. Um, I, I'm, now I'm just kind of in a waiting, you know, pattern, holding pattern here. I could do the fuel lines. Sure. They're right there. Um, I got a couple more spools of them showed up the other day. Uh, I'm going to continue to procrastinate on that just because, ah, man, is, is fuel lines, brake lines, that kind of stuff. It's not easy. And when you do it, you really got to get in the zone. Um, so, and I'm just not in that zone. <laughs> so I'm going to procrastinate on that. I'll probably button up a few other things on this car. Um, but for now, that's going to do it for this episode. I know there's not a lot that was done in this. Sorry. That's the way it goes with this car and these cars, really, all of them. You gotta remember, I'm one guy in a shop. Every once in a while, I've got a buddy that shows up that'll help me out with a little thing here and there. But that's it, it's just me. So, um, transmission tunnel's done. Waiting on that starter so I can check the engagement to the flywheel. Put the uh, scatter shield back up, put the transmission back in it. I'll probably get the transmission washed up today. Um, get that ready to just slam back in the car. That thing's pretty much ready. Then, for the first time in a very long time, I'm going to be able to put the drive shaft back in this car, which I'm pretty excited about. It's over there on the ground. Um, it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm super excited about that. Um, so yeah, we're <laughs> this thing's looking good. I'm a little nervous about the starter. Not going to lie, and the header. I hope they fit. Um, my luck hasn't been too good with stuff lately. Um, but, you know, let's cross fingers. You cross your fingers for me, because I'd appreciate it. So um, that's going to do it on this one. Next episode, we'll slam the starter, we'll st slam the starter in this thing, put the transmission back in this thing, put the drive shaft back in it, um, kind of check on a few more things. We're getting toward the end, guys. We really are. There's not a lot of big item things left. Uh, I'm going to start checking stuff off the, off the list today. Um, 
but it's going to be soon. We're going to hear this thing actually live and breathe again. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited for it. So, um, as always, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so, please like and subscribe. Check out my TikTok. I've been kind of silent on TikTok uh, just because super busy, even though those are only like two minute videos. <laughs> I try and do them once in the morning, but check it out if you got time. I do need to o or, uh, open an Instagram account, especially with everything going on right now. TikTok, and that might be a, a dead platform here soon. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so, like and subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. And as always guys, until next time.